I think this is a woodchuck, also known as a groundhog. I filmed it on 7 July 2016 in front of my house near Albany, New York, USA. The woodchuck had gotten into a bag of dead leaves. It collected a bunch in its mouth and then carried them off, presumably back to its burrow. It kept doing this many times over for at least 15 minutes. I couldn't see where it was going because I was watching it from the window of my house. If I had gone outside, I would have scared it away. My best guess is that the woodchuck was collecting leaves to line its burrow. The caption of this photo suggests that idea. This page says, quote, By the end of October, most woodchucks have begun their winter sleep, curled up in nests of dried grass and leaves, located in burrows below the frost line, end quote. And this blog post mentions in passing that, quote, both the hibernating and nest chambers are lined with dead leaves and grass, end quote. Woodchucks plausibly reduce insect suffering insofar as they eat plant vegetation that would otherwise allow for bigger insect populations. That said, woodchucks occasionally eat small invertebrates, and they probably crush bugs as they move around. Woodchuck mothers have two to six babies per year. The study presents a data table of litter size as well as prenatal mortality. You can see, for example, in 1955 that the average litter size was 3.47 and 0.69 embryos and fetuses were lost before birth. In a stable population, at most two offspring of one mother can survive to reproduce on average, so many of these babies die before reproducing. Woodchucks can be killed by humans, domestic dogs, foxes, bobcats, eagles, and other predators. Following is some information on the woodchuck from Wikipedia. Quote, it is widely distributed in North America and common in the northeastern and central United States and Canada. The groundhog prefers open country and the edges of woodland, and is rarely far from a burrow entrance. Since the clearing of forests provided it with a much more suitable habitat, the groundhog population is probably higher now than it was before the arrival of European settlers in North America. In the wild, groundhogs can live up to six years, with two or three being average. In captivity, groundhogs reportedly live from nine to fourteen years. Groundhogs are generally agonistic and territorial, among their own species, and may skirmish to establish dominance. Outside their burrow, individuals are alert when not actively feeding. It is common to see one or more nearly motionless individuals standing erect on their hind feet, watching for danger. When alarmed, they use a high-pitched whistle to warn the rest of the colony, hence the name whistle pig. Mostly herbivorous, groundhogs eat primarily wild grasses and other vegetation, including berries and agricultural crops, when available. Clover, alfalfa, dandelion, and colt's foot are among preferred groundhog foods. Groundhogs also eat grubs, grasshoppers, insects, snails, and other small animals, but are not as omnivorous as many other sciuridae. Groundhogs are one of the few species that enter into true hibernation, and often build a separate winter burrow for this purpose. Groundhogs are used in medical research on hepatitis B-induced liver cancer. A percentage of the woodchuck population is infected with the woodchuck hepatitis virus, similar to human hepatitis B virus. End quote. This blog post says, quote, Researcher Robert Snyder has also discovered that woodchucks are susceptible to many of the same diseases as humans are. Hepatitis, liver cancer, arteriosclerosis, heart attacks, strokes, even high blood pressure. So they have become popular drug testing laboratory animals. Nevertheless, there is still one woodchuck for every 5 to 10 acres in the northeast, and the all-time woodchuck population explosion occurred at 
Letterkenny Ordnance Depot near Chambersburg back in the 1950s, when Snyder and others estimated that 9,000 woodchucks lived on 10,000 acres. The woodchuck population density on our home grounds is even higher. We're talking five dens on less than an acre. So we occasionally witness what we assume are turf battles in late spring and early summer when youngsters are looking for new homes. Last May, our son David heard growling under the guest house in mid-morning and went outside to investigate. One large and one smaller woodchuck emerged from beneath the house fighting and ended up in the stream. As David watched, the larger one beat up the smaller one and then headed back toward the house. When it saw David, it took off down the road, water streaming from its coat. In July, he witnessed another fight near the guest house. That time, the vanquished Chuck climbed a tree. That July fight was the latest one we have watched. By midsummer, woodchucks are more interested in eating than fighting. End quote. Finally, here's a clip from a video of a woodchuck being killed by a fisher. It reminds us that even though the woodchuck in my video seemed to be doing okay, most woodchucks will endure intense suffering, at least during death, and often at other points in their lives too.